Hello and welcome to the Where Someone Told Me, a weekly series of educational conversations where my guests and I talk about all of the shit that we wish someone would have told us at one point or another on various topics, all of which relate back to the most important topic of all, you, and figuring out who that even is and learning how to accept that person and how to be confident in that person so that you can be who you were born to be. I am your host, John Renee, certified evidence-based life coach specializing in behavioral change and teaching you research-backed techniques using brain science to help you finally feel good and become the person that you need to be in order to have the life that you want. And today, joining me for this conversation, I have a me, myself, and I. I'm going to be talking about um, the things that I wish someone would have told me when it comes to the notion of it doesn't get better, you do. And my goal with this conversation is going to be to empower you with a different perspective and a reframe so that you can listen or watch this right here and now, and then afterwards actually take some action. So I want you to, as you listen to this episode or as you watch, I want you to ask yourself where in your life right now could you take a step back and look at the situation or the circumstance from a different point of view that might, you know, be, oh, well, there's obviously this instance that comes up immediately, or it might be something where you are thinking to yourself, hmm, you know, where could I, or it might be a situation where you know that you're not necessarily you know, 100% happy, but you haven't admitted that to yourself because that would then mean, oh shit, I'm not 100% happy right here. And oof, I'm going to do something about it. Or you feel obligated to do something about it. It could look like any of those. It could look like something else, but I just want you to kind of think about the situations in your life that, you know, we might, you might be hoping gets better, but we're going to talk about the fact that it's not that that's going to get better. It's that you are going to. And so with that, I want to start with the question that I usually start these conversations with when there is a guest. And I'm going to ask me, myself, and I here in this situation, what is what is some shit that I wish someone would have told me about the concept of or the phrase, it doesn't get better, you do, or it doesn't get better, you just get stronger or whatever variation you may be familiar with. And what I wish, what me, myself, and I wishes that someone would have told me about that concept or quote or notion is, first of all, what the fuck that actually means? And then secondly, how do I actually get better? And so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And so take it from the top. What does that mean? I think that what I have learned it doesn't get better means to me and what I've seen it mean is that despite best case scenarios, we are still inevitably going to experience hardship. And granted, I just want to put it out there. I am not saying that we are doomed as a society, that we are doomed as a collective on a global scale, that, you know, things just will never get better that we can't, I'm not saying that we can't come together and, you know, make things better, right? I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is even when we are living our best life, our hashtag best life, right? Even in those instances, we will still experience hardships like the loss of a loved one, like miscommunications with those who are an integral part of our lives, unforeseeable circumstances like the pandemic, even when we are living our best lives, these things will happen. And so I think that that is what I have come to learn. The first part of that quote means it's not that it gets better. It's not that it can't, right? It's not that it can't, not that things can't get better, but it's not just that things suddenly get better. It is that you do. And so what that second part means, what the you do part, like what you get stronger, you get better. What that part to me means is that you learn more effective ways of 
coping with those situations, you learn ways to better filter out which situations and experiences and people to invest your time and energy in. And as you move through this process of self-discovery and evolution of who you are, you then as a byproduct, get better. You become better. You become more equipped to navigate these times of experiences. And I feel personally that the problem that we see today is that so many of us are disillusioned to simply look for better circumstance. It's easy if, oh, well, my partner isn't, you know, doing this thing, then I'm just going to like go swipe on an app to find another one. Oh, well, I, you know, I don't like this, you know, job, let's say, I'm just going to find another one. We are in the mindset of, well, I don't have to put up with that. Granted, you don't, you don't, but it's not something that we are in the practice of leveraging those experiences for our own growth and our own development. It's oftentimes that we are disillusioned to think that when we just get this other better next external thing, that magically things will just get better, right? But it's that notion that, you know, wherever you go, there you are, right? And no matter how many relationships or jobs you may go through to find that quote unquote better feeling, if you don't change within yourself, if you don't become better, if you don't develop and become different, then you're going to find yourself repeating the same situation and same circumstance and continuously just chasing that better thing, right? And so I'm bringing this up because I want to give you some examples. Um, and well, I'm bringing this up because I think that it is important that we look at these types of situations and that we have that awareness and that realization because I feel that one of the problems is other than the fact that we are disillusioned is that oftentimes many of us don't know that we're even doing it, right? We have been told, well, you know how to put up with that shit, which granted you don't. And at the same time, like I said, it's not necessarily always a case of finding something different, but of doing something different, right? Like we can always like try to find a new pair of shoe, shoes. I don't know why I stutter there. We can always try to find, you can always try to find a different pair of shoes and wonder why your foot hurts. But if you don't look at the fact that like, oh, well, you're out of alignment, right? Or you got like a bunion, let's say, if you don't look at the fact that like, hey, like that's not the problem, then it's just going to keep showing up in different ways. And so it's also applicable when we think of our relationships, right? So for example, it's not that the people in your life suddenly just all get better, so to speak. It is that you learn better communication skills. It is that you set better boundaries. And therefore, as a byproduct, your relationships get better. And through that process, so does your ability to identify the types of people that you align with, right? We can also apply this to experiences. It's not that experiences just get better, right? Or suddenly like you're, you're presented with all these new opportunities. It is that your ability to effectively recognize which situations are going to best serve you and which ones are better to avoid and not put your energy towards that develops and that gets better. And your ability to effectively navigate those unavoidable situations gets better. That's what gets better. When we think of this in terms of emotional trauma, and pain and hurt, like I mentioned earlier, like the grief isn't gonna stop, like people aren't gonna stop dying, but you are going to develop better tools for responding to those traumas and for responding to those painful situations. You're also going to learn healthier and more effective coping techniques and mechanisms. One of the examples that I wanna offer you here, which is a personal one, as many of you know, my mother passed away somewhat unexpectedly this past December. And it was something where as I was moving through that, as I was coping, I was very present to the fact that the way that I coped then was not the way that I would have coped 10 years ago. Right. And 
it's interesting to recognize that in that way, I got better, right? I got better at effectively navigating loss. I've lost people before and I drank myself into an oblivion. And this is not to shame anyone that has done that or that might be you know, doing that now. This is not to trigger anyone. This is to offer you the example of that wasn't effective for me. That didn't teach me anything about myself. That didn't teach me anything about the situation. All I did in that was numb. And so it was interesting for me to go through everything that I did to still be going through it now and to have the awareness and the perspective that, you know, this is something that has happened. How can I use this for my own development and also to support others that might be going through something similar? And so that's what I mean when I talk about, it's not that things get better. It is that you do. And the common denominator in all those examples that I just shared, whether it be relationships and communication, experiences and situations, trauma, pain and hurt, the common denominator is that you are involved in all of those things. And the more that you learn about yourself, the better equipped you are going to be. And that's why I teach my clients. That's why I teach anyone that will listen how to learn what works for them. And that's why I am here having these conversations every week about some shit that I wish someone would have told me is so that I can help you be better equipped to navigate what come, what might come. And so whenever we are thinking about solutions in this term, so like, what's the solution here? So if we have this awareness that, okay, so things don't necessarily magically get better, but it's that I do. So how do we start to, you know, look into that as a solution? And so the first thing that I want to offer you is to consider that this is a reframe, right? We think that things get better, but again, like I've said, it's not that the things get better. It is that you do. It is that the more experience you have, the better equipped that you are going to be, right? So for example, you're probably a better driver now than you were 10 years ago, but also not necessarily, right? Because it's not necessarily the duration of time that passes. It's what you do within that time that expands on your capacity to actually effectively navigate these circumstances and to actually come become better. And so whenever you are moving through this, you know, are you growing and becoming more resilient or are you succumbing to a victimhood mentality? Granted, some things like you cannot help, right? So I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you that you manifested that shitty experience because sometimes things just happen. And it sucks, but there's nothing that you could have done to prevent it. There's nothing that you can do to stop it. It is what it is. The only thing that you can control is how you respond to it. And I also want to note with that, that this whole notion of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is some bullshit, right? You could have a weakened immune system based on something that happens to you. You could experience psychological and or emotional trauma or a physical handicap based on something that happened, right? And so it's not that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Like, fuck that. That is some bullshit. But what I want you to note with this is, again, how can you leverage that something to become better because of it? Because, you know, shitty experiences oftentimes will leave us with battle wounds and that fucking sucks. And at the same time, are you just going to roll over and say, oh, well, it is what it is. Or are you going to leverage that knowledge and that experience in a way that serves you? Do you want to make excuses or do you want to get results? And so what I mean by that is that maybe you use your shitty experience to inform others and like, let them know, hey, this is what was true for me. Be on alert. Hopefully you won't experience the same misfortune kind of a thing, or hopefully you will be able to navigate this better, which is again, what I do every day. And which is why I have conversations every week to share the shit that I wish someone would have told me to you listening right here, right now. Maybe you use your shitty experience to make sure that it never happens to you again, right? That you are more aware of what those signs look like. And if you are in a position where you recognize, hmm, this kind of reminds me of that thing that I don't want to happen again, then you are able to respond differently 
to prevent the same outcome. Maybe you use your experience in some other way. It's totally up to you. But what I don't want you to do is let that shitty experience overtake you so that you become helpless and hopeless and feel powerless because there is always something that you can do. And sometimes that something is just asking for help and that's okay. And if that is you, I encourage and support you to do that. So with that, how do we actually become better? right? Like what are these actual things that we do? And before I go into some actual action steps, I want to first mention that this is something that's very personal and unique to you. And so I'm going to offer you a framework. And while you're going to kind of mad libs fill in the blanks, this isn't something that will likely happen. Like, oh, well, that's just what I do. Cool. It's done. Right? Like each circumstance is going to be so unique and specific. Everything is going to be unique and personal to you. And something that I like to offer everyone is the notion and the concept of it's all just R&D. It's all just research and development. And it's something where I encourage you to give yourself grace and patience as you evolve into the next version of yourself, as you discover who it is that you are, not just today, but at every step along the way. And so with that, I want to go back to earlier when I invited you to consider where in your life right now you can step back and look at things from a different point of view. So that is step number one of your tangible item. That is the first thing, awareness, right? You can't change something that you're not aware of. You can't change something that you don't recognize is something that you want to change or a problem, if you will. And whenever you are considering this different perspective, maybe it is the point of view that the other person is taking. If you are in a situation where whatever the situation is that you want to change is um, involving another person. Maybe it is the point of view that your friend would take or someone that has your best interest in heart would take or your has your best interest at heart would take. So looking at the situation from an outside perspective with again, your best interest. Maybe it is the point of view of looking at the situation through the lens of someone who is an expert in solving this thing or a consultant on this matter. Maybe it's all of the above. Maybe you look at you know a bunch of different perspectives to really gain some insight, right? Maybe it's a completely different perspective that I didn't even mention. But what I want you to do once you have that perspective is get it out on paper, right? Like I want you to take that perspective, I want you to take your feelings as well and put them on paper, put them in a voice note, get them out of your head. And I want you to do this somewhere that is not going to be shown to anyone else. You can show it to someone else, but I want you to put this in a space where you feel safe to say whatever it is that's on your mind. You can do that unfiltered because whenever you are recognizing like how you personally feel about the situation, right? Like you, you might have some awareness of that. But I also want you to, like I said, consider it from that other point of view and then take that, put it on paper, put it in a voice note, and also take your point of view, how you feel about it, so that you can kind of start to feel like what's true for you and also what else could be true, right? So expanding your awareness in that sense. So we have the awareness. Now I want you to expand it. So your point of view, your feelings, how you think of the situation how someone else thinks of the situation. You've already been thinking about how someone else thinks of the situation. So think about how you think of it as well. Put that on paper, put that in a voice note, put that somewhere safe where it is protected, where you can speak your truth without any reservations. And once you have done that, once you know how you feel, once you, or have an idea of how you feel, once you have some ideas of what some different points of views on that situation could be, once you have that out so that it's not just floating around in your head so that you can literally look at it from a different point of view or listen to it, I want you to think about what one action step is that you can take today to improve the situation, to move the needle closer to where you would like for it to be, to lessen the pressure, to lessen the gravity, to lessen the intensity of the, the negative impacts that the situation has so that it can start to, be, to get a little bit better. So that you can, you, so that you are developing your capacity to make it better, right? So for example, this might look like having a conversation with someone for taking it back to the relationship example. Let's say you need to have a conversation with 
Frank, right? But when I think about having a conversation with Frank, that's still really foreign to me. I start to get really nervous and kind of feeling anxious. Like I, I don't, I don't, we ain't ready. Like I'm not ready to have a conversation with Frank. Okay. So one action step might be recognizing that, hey, I need to. If you already kind of knew that, because let's be honest, like we know we need to have the conversations usually, right? Then maybe it looks like considering what things you want to share. Maybe it looks like finding that safe space, that voice note, that piece of paper, that note on your phone that no one's ever going to see but you, no one's ever going to listen to but you. Maybe it looks like getting out all of your emotions. Maybe it looks like speaking it aloud, right? Maybe it looks like just hearing the sound of your own voice express your frustration or your, your hurt or whatever it may be. Maybe it just looks like that. Maybe that's step one, right? Maybe it is, you know, if you're busy today listening to this, like in the car or something, or you're on your way to an appointment, you don't have time. Maybe it looks like taking a few minutes and putting a time in your calendar to write that letter, to get out your emotions, to express what it is that you're feeling. Like what's the one thing that you can do, right? Maybe that one thing is just making the time to do that thing in the future. That counts. Another example is, you know, if you want to, let's say, pay off debt, but maybe that feels like, oh, where do I start, right? Maybe before you, you know, start to pay off debt, you need to assess your finances. But again, maybe it's a busy day. Put that in your calendar, right? Like, what is the one thing that you can do? Maybe you want to get involved in some social activism, which we love. Maybe you want to make a difference and create the changes that you want to see in this world. And, you know, that can also be overwhelming. So maybe before you do that, that will require you to consider, okay, where, like what part do I want to take action in? And what are some organizations that I can reach out to? Or when is some time that I can do that? What is the one thing that you can do? What is the one step that you can take? Because two things with this. So first of all, if you try to do all the things at once, that's going to be too much for your brain. It's going to get overwhelmed. It's like, fuck, this is a lot. And so whenever we get overwhelmed, what do we do? We do nothing. Because if we do nothing, then chances are that things will most likely stay the same. Whenever things stay the same, then that sends a signal to our brains that we are safe. And that is something that we need to feel on a very primal biological baseline level. We need to feel safe. So if you try to do too much too less, that was like, we went deep down that rabbit hole there, or excuse me, if you try to do too much too soon, then it's going to be overwhelming. We're just not going to do shit. So that's why I offer you just, just do this one thing, just one thing, not only, you know, put it in your calendar, you actually then have to take action on it. Like, I don't want to, I feel like that. I don't need to say that, but in case I need to say that, like actually make sure that you honor that appointment that you honor that time to, you know, voice note or to write down what you was when we want to say that person to look at your budget, to research different organizations, to become socially active and whatever, like whatever that thing is. If you make the appointment, make sure you actually do it. If you are taking some other action, make sure again, you actually do it, right? You have to keep rinsing and repeating, but small sustainable steps are what is going to lead to massive, big impacts. Okay. It's not going to be that you suddenly, you know, just do it all at once. So that's the first thing that I wanted to offer you. The second thing that I wanted to offer you is the reason and the fact that you are now here listening to me, that you are now going to, after this, go and you know, look through these steps that I've offered you when it comes to considering your perspective, considering someone else's perspective, getting it out on paper and thinking of the one action step. The fact that you are shifting your focus to start looking for the solutions is a way that you are going to become better. That is actually how you become better. That and the small, sustainable, consistent steps that you are going to take. There is something known as your reticular activating system, which is the part of your brain that acts as a filtration device because we get so much information that like we can't take it all in, right? Because that's overwhelming. It's too much for us to process. And so what your reticular activating system does, also known via the acronym, your RAS, is you tell it what things to filter through. 
This is the same reason that when you say that you want a red car, you suddenly see red cars everywhere because you didn't tell your reticular activating system to notice those until then. So when you are doing this practice, when you are telling yourself, whenever you are telling your brain to look for solutions, to consider steps and options and ways to make this situation better and to create this solve, you are priming your brain to seek out more of those solutions, to seek out more solves. You want to be right. Your brain wants to be right. And so it's going to do the things and give you the things that affirm your beliefs. And so if you are in the space where you are now, after listening to this, taking action to actively, you know, make things better to actually solve these things that are concerns in your life, then your brain is going to want to make you happy. And so it's going to be like, oh, what about this is a solve? Oh, what about that is a solve? Because you've told your reticular activating system to, hey, we're not going to look at the bad shit anymore. We're not going to look at how much this sucks. We're not going to look at, we, we can acknowledge it sucks. I'm not saying don't, but I'm saying we're not going to dwell on that anymore. We acknowledge it sucks and we acknowledge that we want to do something about it. And so we're going to start focusing on that. We're going to start focusing on these solutions. We're going to start focusing on these steps that we need to take in order to arrive at the solution. That is what we are going to start focusing on. And as you do that, that is how you get better. So that is what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. If you got anything from it, please, please, please do share it with someone so that they can too. Uh, Like this video and comment your thoughts if you are watching on YouTube and make sure to join me on Instagram over at Hey John and Renee on Wednesday, because I'm going to be posting some polls in my stories to hear about your experience as it relates to situations getting better, not the situations getting better, but you getting better. So make sure to join me over there on Wednesday, because I want to hear about your experience If you found that to be true, if you found something else to be true, what's worked for you, what hasn't, and all of that good stuff. And then on Friday, I'm going to be going live over on Instagram to share what you had to say and your experience and also to answer any questions that you might have about this topic. And so I would love to see you there. Um, Everything is going to be linked in the description, so you can just easily tap to it from there. Otherwise, I hope that you have an amazing day. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.